Little Tobra by Rudyard Kipling. Prisoner's head did not reach the top of the dock, as the newspaper is as the English newspapers say. This case, however, was not reported because nobody cared by so much as a hempen rope for the life or death of Little Tobra. The assessors in the red courthouse sat upon him all through the long, hot afternoon. And whenever they asked him a question, he salaamed and whined. Their verdict was the, that the evidence was inconclusive, and the judge concurred. It was true that the dead body of Little Tobra's sister had been found at the bottom of the well, and Little Tobra was the only human being within a half-mile radius at the time. But the child might have fallen in by accident. Therefore, Little Tobra was acquitted and told to go where he pleased. This permission was not so generous as it sounds, for he had nowhere to go, nothing in particular to eat, and nothing whatever to wear. He trotted into the court compound and sat upon the well curb, wondering whether an unsuccessful dive into the black water below would end in a forced voyage across the other black water. A groom put down an emptied nose bag on the bricks, and little Tobra, being hungry, set himself to scrape out what wet grain the horse had overlooked. O oh, thief! And but newly set free from the terror of the law! Come along! said the groom and little Tobra was led by the ear to a large and fat Englishman, who heard the tale of the theft. Ha! said the Englishman, three times, only he said a stronger word. Put him into the net, and take him home. So little Tobra was thrown into the net of the cart, and nothing doubting that he should be stuck like a pig was, was driven to the Englishman's house. Ha! said the Englishman as before. Wet grave, by Jove! Feed the little beggar! Some of you, and we'll make a riding boy of him. See? Wet grain! Good lord! Give an account of yourself, said the head of the grooms to little Tobra after the meal had been eaten, and the servants lay at ease in the quarters behind the house. You are not, in the ha you are not of the groom caste, unless it be for the stomach's sake. How came you into the court? And why? Answer, little devil's spawn! There was not enough to eat, said little Tobra calmly. This is a good place. Talk straight talk, said the groom, or I will make you clean out the stable of the lat large red stallion who bites like a camel. We be Tellus oil pressers, said little Tobra, scratching his toes in the dust. We were Tellus, my father, my mother, my brother, the elder by four years, myself, and the sister. She who was found dead in the well, said one who had heard something of the trial. Even so, said little Tobra gravely. She who was found dead in the well, it befell upon a time which is not in my memory that the sickness came to the village where our oil press stood, and my and first sister and first my sister was smitten as to her eyes, and went without sight, for it was Mata the smallpox. Thereafter my father and my brother mother my father and my mother died of that same sickness, so we were alone, my brother who was twelve years, I who was eight, and the sister who could not see. Yet were there bullocks and the oil press remaining, and we made shift to press the oil as before. But Sir John Das, the grain seller, cheated us in his dealings, and it was always a stubborn bullock to drive. We put marigold flowers for the gods upon the neck of the bullock, and upon the great grinding beam that rose through the roof, but we gained nothing to bear by, and Sir, Don, Sir, John, Sir John Das was a hard man. Rappy bap muttered the groom's wife, to cheat a child so. But we know we know what what the Bunya folk are, sisters. The press was an old press, and we were not strong men, my brother and I, nor could we fix the neck of the beam firmly in the shackle. Nay, indeed, said the gorgeously clad wife of the head groom, joining the circle. That is a strong man's work. When I was a maid in my father's house. Peace, woman, said the head groom. Go on, boy. It is nothing, said little Tobra. The big beam tore down the roof upon a day which was not which is not in my memory, and which and with with the roof fell much the hinder wall, and both together upon our bullock, whose back was broken. Thus we had neither home, nor press, nor bullock, my brother, myself, and the sister who was blind. We went crying away from that place, hand in hand across the fields, and our money was seven ands and six pie. There was a famine in the land. I do not know the name of the land. So, on a night when we were sleeping, my brother took the five annas that remained to us and ran away. 
I do not know whither he went. The curse of my father be upon him. But I and the sister begged food in the villages, and there was none to give. Only all men said, Go to the Englishmen, and they will give. I did not know what Englishmen, what the Englishmen were, but they said that they were white, living in tents. I went forward, but I cannot say whither I went, and there was no more food for myself or the sister. And upon a hot night, she weeping and calling for food, we came to a well, and I bade her sit upon the curb, and thrust her in, for, in truth, she could not see, and it is better to die than to starve. Ay, ay, wailed the groom's wives in chorus. He thrust her in, for it is better to die than to starve. I would have thrown myself in also, but she was not dead, and called to me from the bottom of the well, and I was afraid and ran. And one came out of the crops, saying that I had killed her, and defied the well, and they took me before an Englishman, white and terrible, living in a tent, and me he sent here. But there were no witnesses, and it is better to die than to starve. She, furthermore, could not see with her eyes, and was but a little child. Was but a little child, echoed Headgroom's wife. But who art thou, weak as a fowl, and small as a day-old colt? What art thou? I, who was empty, am now full, said little Tobra, stretching himself upon the dust, and I would sleep. The groom's wife spread a cloth over him, while little Tobra slept the sleep of the just. That is A Little Tobra by Rudyard Kipling.